Welcome back to 5 Minutes Splunk. Today's video is creating a Linux virtual machine using VirtualBox. Now, this is actually a supplemental video. I just wrapped up a three-part series where I walked through step-by-step -step how to create a Linux virtual machine. I got feedback from some of the viewers asking to create a VirtualBox tutorial. And honestly, I don't blame them. The software I used for that three-part series was VMware. And VMware costs about 200 bucks. If you're just trying to develop Splunk apps and play around with Splunk architecture, there's no reason why you need to spend that money. VirtualBox is free, it's cross-platform, and it's GNU open source. So this is going to be a high-level tutorial. We're not going to go into as much depth as usual. I highly recommend you watch that three-part series before watching this tutorial. So what's on the menu? As always, we'll begin with some getting started links. We'll talk about why we use virtual machines for Splunk development. We'll set up CentOS take a snapshot, and we'll wrap up with related videos and contact information. A couple links before we get started. First off, my name is Josh. I'm a Splunk consultant and used to work with the Splunk professional services team. I've been on site to many, many Splunk customers and I picked up a lot of best practices along the way. To find out more about me and why I make these videos, click on the icon to the left. Next, if you don't mind, I'd really appreciate it if you like this video. The more people that hit the like button, the higher it'll show up in search results. Just recently, we launched our Big Data Developer Network. Basically, it's a chat room that connects Splunk professionals from around the world. It's a perfect place to ask questions, get real-time help, and generally just bounce ideas off one another. If you use Splunk at your day job, you should definitely join our developer network. Click on the icon to learn more. And finally, I push out a couple of these videos every week. If you want to stay up to date, click on the icon to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, with that out of the way, let's put five minutes up on the clock. And today we have skeptical third world kid. And he says, so you're telling me I can run VMs for free? And he's absolutely right. I'm gonna show you how to in just a moment. But first, let's talk about why you should use virtual machines for developing Splunk. It's not uncommon for me to show up at a customer site and they're working on a proof of concept or developing a Splunk app on their local host machine. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this, but in my opinion, it's a bad approach. What I prefer is a clean, abstracted approach where you keep Splunk and all its install files isolated to a virtual machine. This is helpful when you're supporting multiple versions of Splunk. Say, for example, you're upgrading from version 4.x to version 6.x. Instead of installing and uninstalling the software, it's easier to just spin up multiple VMs. By far the biggest advantage is when it comes to restoring snapshots. This is nice because it gives you a safety net. You know that no matter how bad you screw up, you can always restore to a previous snapshot. In my opinion, this leads to more freedom, leads to more experimentation and playing around with the software. And lastly, when you're done working, you can just turn them all off and there's no overhead on the system. All right, first things first, go out to the internet and download VirtualBox for whatever platform you're on. I'm on a Mac, but I imagine that the Windows version looks very similar. We're going to start by clicking New. And we're going to call this guy CentOS 6.4. Now, the type is Linux, of course. And you'll notice that CentOS is not listed in this list. Um, that's OK, though. We're, going to, we're actually just going to use other Linux. Now, I've downloaded the 64-bit version of CentOS, but if you had the 32, you'd click this one. So I'm going to hit 64. Now it's asking, how much RAM should we allocate for this virtual machine? And I'm going to give it 1 gig of memory. It asks about virtual disks. Yes, we will create one. So now we'll click Create. So where are we actually going to save this file? Well, I'm going to write it out to my virtual machines. And we're going to call this sent OS 6.4 virtual box test or whatever you want to name it. How big is the disk going to be? Eight gigabytes is fine. We will use a virtual box disk image and we will dynamically allocate it. So with these settings, let's hit create. And there we go. We have an empty powered off virtual machine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the disk image that we downloaded earlier. So right mouse button on it and hit settings. We're going to go to storage and we're going to click on the optical drive, which at this point is empty. 
So we're gonna click on this, oops. We're gonna click on this button here and we're gonna choose a disk image to mount. We'll point it at the CentOS 6.4 minimal ISO that we downloaded earlier and hit open. We'll hit okay. Now let's fire this baby up. You'll see that's booting. Okay, there's a couple error me uh, warning messages here, just discard those. But you'll notice that it worked. It booted to the disk image that we wanted. And from here on out, the instructions are gonna be the exact same as my earlier tutorial. All right, I just stepped through and installed CentOS on this virtual machine. You can see that I can log in. There we go. Now I wanna show you how to create snapshots. So we're gonna release the mouse and we're gonna click on the snapshots icon over here in the upper right. You'll notice now we have an icon, so let's click it to take a snapshot and we'll name this one blank install. It writes it out to disk and there you have it. That's how you take and restore snapshots with uh, inside this little uh, screen right here. That's it for this video. Let's keep the conversation going. Make sure to check us out on social media. Our username is 5minsplunk. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.